This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. All right, Uncle Bill. You have all three of us here. If there's any point to this, get to it, will you? Uh... None of you has ever been subtle in his dislike for me, anyhow. Well, I'm sure you don't think much more of us than we think of you. We understand each other perfectly, don't we? I think we do. Look, Uncle Bill, if you have anything to say to us, say it, will you? I have a date. I apparently have a date, too, with someone who wants to kill me. As you all have been very pleased to know, I have received several anonymous telephone calls threatening my life. So what? I can imagine how you three must feel, since my death means that you will inherit my entire estate. It is still in the millions, isn't it, Uncle? More millions than you can imagine. And it is still left entirely to us. Merely because I have no choice in the matter. The condition under which I inherited from my father stipulates that I must leave it all to you. Well, when you see your father, which should be soon, say thanks for us. Yeah, I have taken it upon myself to add something to my will. John, will you stop playing with that toy? It's not a toy. It's a magic trick. Uh. Now you see the card. Made Put your magic tricks away while I'm talking. Now, I've stated in my will that in the event that I'm murdered, not one cent will be given to any of you until my murder is solved. Really? Yes. All of you not only hate me, but you hate each other. Two of you would profit immensely if one of you were convicted of killing me. It amuses me to picture each of you scrambling madly to blame my death on one or the other. If you really think someone's trying to kill you, why don't you notify the police? I'm going even beyond the police, my dear Sam. I'm going to Boston Blackie. And now meet Richard Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Hey, Eddie, give me one of those You know what I like about you, Blackie? Okay. The quaint places you take me to eat. Like this. Well, you know what I like about you. Nope. Me. Oh. Why don't we watch Daddy's telephone call for you, Mr. Blackie? Thanks. One thing I don't like about you, you always want it on the phone. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll just be a moment. I'll uh, be back in time for dessert, will you? I'll be back for soup. Excuse me, dear. Right over in your boots, sir. Right there. Thank you. Hello? Mr. Boston Blackie? Yeah. I'm William Blaine. Yes? I've received several telephone calls in the past week, threatening my life. So? So I'm hiring you to protect me. Oh, that's very nice of you, but I'm not interested. You don't seem to know who I am. Sure I do. You're William Blaine. Well, I expect you to accept the job. Oh, you do? I'm not accustomed to being refused. Well, let's say I'm breaking you in. I insist that you take the job. If you want protection, call the police. You'll become my bodyguard for the next few days, or I'll ruin you, Blackie. I don't ruin easily, Blaine. And besides, I have a job entertaining a lovely lady at lunch. Goodbye. Now, you listen. Hi there, honey. Miss me? How could I? It's such an interesting menu to read. How's the plot? Good? Mm-hmm. Especially the chapter called Roast Ribs of Beef and Potatoes Any Style. <laughs> Important phone call? Oh, just a fellow named Bill Blaine. Okay. Well, right now, he's a guy who's still looking for a bodyguard. Hi, Miss Worthy. I gotta see Blackie. Oh, come in, Jordy. Oh, gee, thanks. Where, where's Blackie? I gotta see him. What kind of... Will you be here in a minute? Sit down. Oh, gee, thanks. Anything the matter? Oh, plenty. Oh, he should be here any minute. Oh, gee, Miss Wesley. You sure are a beautiful dame. Oh, Shorty, you're wonderful. Oh, gosh, Miss Wesley, do you think so? I most certainly do. Oh, oh, here's Blackie now. Gee, I hope so, because I ain't got a minute to lose. Hi, honey. All set to... Thank you. Shorty put into words what you seem to be saying in that whistle. Shorty, do I have a rival? Hiya, boss. Boss, look, I, I, got, I got troubles. I can fix them up between now and dinner time? I don't know, boss. It's pretty bad. Oh, will it still be bad tomorrow morning? It'll be worse. All right. Let's have it. Boss, look, do you remember the rap that you got me out of six years ago? That's dead, Shorty. But that's it. It ain't dead enough. Sam Daniels all of a sudden's going to send me up for those sports checks. You faced it with him way back when I did it. He promised he wouldn't do nothing to me if I went straight. How do you know Daniels is going to prosecute? 
He called me up and told me so. Hmm. Well, don't worry about it, short one. I'll go out and have a talk with Daniels. I'll be back, Mary. What comes first with you, Blackie? Business or pet? If this means what I think it does, honey, this business is going to be a pleasure. Sit down, Blackie, sit down. I can stand, Blaine, but not for what you're doing. I just left Sam Daniels. How did you find out he could send Shorty to jail for forgery? And a man has unlimited funds, he can find out a great many things. All right. What's the deal? I want you to accept the job I offered you on the telephone this noon. Or what? Or your friend Shorty goes to jail. What do I have to do? I've received several telephone calls from someone threatening to kill me. I want you to protect me. And what about Shorty? If you do as I say, I'll not force Daniels to prosecute your friend. Now, I get what I want, don't I? You're getting the wrong man for a bodyguard, Mr. Blaine, because, frankly, I'd just as soon see you dead. Well, then you and my family should get along famously here. They feel the same way. Oh, I'm to move in? I expect to occupy your full time. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Wait till Mary hears about this. I'll call my family to come down. I'd like you to meet them. You're the boss. But introduce me as, uh, old John Jones, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Oh, excuse me. Oh? Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Was that another friend on your life? Yes, obviously, the last one. The voice just said you're going to be killed tonight. Oh, I see you arrived just in time for the fun. Uh, did you recognize the voice? No, it's a disguise. Oh, that's fine. It wasn't one of your family, was it? That's impossible. They're here in the house. We have only one outside line. Better call them down so we can be sure. Well, how are you? Oh, Martha. Now, this is uh, John Jones, my bodyguard. Mr. Jones, this is my niece, Martha. Oh, how do you do, Mr. How are you? Uh, tell your brothers to come here at once. Bodyguard, huh? Oh, this could be very amusing. Robert, John. I am. John's upstairs, I think. Oh, John. Yeah. Come on down for a laugh. Uncle Bill's gone and bought himself a bodyguard. Tell me. Pleasant family you have, Mr. Blaine. Yes, don't I? Now, this is Robert, my nephew. Robert, Mr. John Jones. How do you do, Mr. Jones? How do you do? I hope you're getting a high fee, Mr. Jones, because you might have to earn it. <laughs> hey, hey, let's see this bodyguard. Is he tough? Well, he's, uh, he's handsome. Hey, Mr. Jones, you've now met my entire family. Uh, uh, this is John. John, Mr. Jones. Oh, how are you, Mr. Jones? Hello. I think you'd better guard Uncle Bill from us, too. We don't love him. Or has he told you? If he hasn't, I know it by now. Your uncle just received another of those telephone calls. Your being here is the only thing that keeps me from thinking one of you made the call just now. But I think we should call the police. So do I. Uh, It'll mean nothing but nasty publicity. I I don't think the police are necessary. I do. I say let's get a lot of them and make absolutely sure. Well, I know the police commissioner. He'll send us all the policemen we want. Well, Mr. Blaine, at least two-thirds of your family show concern for your life. Don't let them fool you, Mr. Jones. They don't want me to live. They're daring me to. All right, all right. Let's have a little organization here. Now stay in this room, Mr. Blaine. Will I be safe here? I don't know why not. You have two policemen in here with you. Now that's what I call protection. What are you doing over there, Mr. Jones? It's just trying the windows. They're locked good and tight. I oh, was just checking. I don't need checking. Take him out, Ron. Okay, bud. Come on, outside. Looks like I'll have to guard you from a distance, Mr. Blaine. Okay, everybody out. You too, sister. You're sure we shouldn't all stay in here? There it is, orders. Everybody outside. <laughs> all right. Okay, Rollins. Lock the door. Yes, sir. Now what, officer? You're behind locked doors and windows, Mr. Blaine. Got two cops right beside you, Susan. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, wish I were as sure as you are. Don't worry. You won't let anybody touch your hair on your head. Not even if all he wants to do is comb it. Why don't you go to sleep, Mr. Blaine? How can I do anything when I feel like an animal in a cage? 
Can't we open a window just to crack for air? Nothing doing. The windows stay locked tight. The door is locked. That's where everything stays, because that's the only way you're safe. And you're plenty safe in here. Uh, it should be. I'm uncomfortable enough. Hey, how about a game of gin, Smith? Yeah. Got cards? I'm lower your voices when you are. I think I'll try to read. Okay. I don't suppose either of you... Mr. Blaine! Mr. Blaine! What happened to him? What do you think happened to him? That noise wasn't a backfire. Look at him. I was a shot, huh? Did you get him? Yeah. Is he dead? Yeah. Shot. In the sealed room, too, with us practically sitting beside him. Call Faraday quick. How will I tell him? Tell him it couldn't happen, but it did. Now, back to our story. When the wealthy Bill Blaine received strange telephone calls threatening with death, he forced Boston Blackie to become his bodyguard by digging up some old evidence against Shorty, Blackie's friend. When Blaine heard that he was to be killed last night, Blackie called in the help of the police and put Blaine in a locked room and stood guard over him. Then the police insisted that Blackie leave, and shortly thereafter, Bill Blaine was shot and killed. As we return to our story, Inspector Faraday is at the scene of the crime. What do you mean, no glass is broken? If the shot didn't come from inside the room, it came from outside. We've gone over every pane of glass, Inspector. There isn't even a crack anywhere. Yeah, and the windows are still locked. This is crazy. This is impossible. Oh, we know it. Uh... All right. The shot came from inside the room, then. You've gone over all the pictures, the molding, the fireplace? Everything, We've inspect. inspected every inch of floorboard, too, and we haven't found a thing. It's crazy. It's impossible. You said that. A fine couple of cops you are. Where's the dead guy's family? Upstairs. All right, both of you. Go up there and get him. Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, boy, it's not everything. Not so good, is it? Who's that out there? Who's that in there? Blanky. Well, Inspector Faraday. The danger must be over. You've arrived. What are you doing here? I live here. Live here? Sure. I'm Bill Blaine's bodyguard. Well, get over there and guard the body. Say, he looks a little bit dead. He's been dead for 45 minutes. Then I don't suppose he'll recover. Uh, who shot him? One of your men? I not only don't know who shot him, I don't even know how he was shot. Don't know how? Nothing inside this room fired a bullet. And there's not a, a pane of glass broken in any of the windows, which were locked. What? Where were you 45 minutes ago? Well, that's hard to say. I didn't look at my watch. Where have you been? Sorry, pal. Well, as long as you keep your secret, I'll keep you. Come on, Blackie. Oh, Inspector, put away that gun. Oh, I will. After I put you where you belong, in jail. Now, you know I didn't kill this guy. I don't say you did, but you're plenty mixed up in this. You live here in this house. You're this guy's bodyguard, and yet you aren't guarded. And on top of it all, you disappear when the guy gets killed. And you won't tell me where you were. I can. Well, I'm holding you as a material witness. I won't be very good material. And besides, I know how Blaine was killed. Uh, put away that gun, and I'll show you. I'll hold the gun, and you'll still show me. All right. Okay. Now, uh, do you mind if I open one of the windows? Why? To show you how it was done. Go ahead. Thanks, Inspector. No tricks now. And make it snappy. I don't have all day. I'll, uh, I'll have to climb out on the flagstone walk. That's where the killer stood. Blanky, if this is a... a what are you a... worrying about? You've got a gun on me. And I can shoot straight, too. Okay, okay. I'm all set. Now, how is it done? Now, I'm the killer. Yeah? Now, uh, come over here and, and put your arm across the window sill. Okay. But no tricks. I've got my gun right in your face. You wouldn't shoot a pal, would you? A pal, no. Come on, come on. How was it done? Oh, like this. The killer stood here. Yeah, wise the... guy. The window wasn't open. It was closed. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Then maybe I'd better close it. Oh! Oh! you're breaking my arm. And you're breaking my heart. Oh! Drop that gun, oh! Barry. Drop it. Oh! Thanks, pal. Blackie, I'll show the booker to for this. Well, make it a good book, will you, Inspector? Because while you're trying to catch up with me, I'd like to catch up on my reading. Yeah? Yeah, I can Inspector. I'll say you can come in. I want to talk to you, Miss Wesley. Well, I want to talk to you, too. What about? About this story in the newspaper. What about it? It says that you're looking for Boston Blackie as a material witness to the murder of William Blaine. So? So... 
Maybe you'll change your mind when I tell you where Blackie was when Mr. Blaine was killed. Where? With me. That's no alibi in my book. Where were you? The newspaper says Mr. Blaine was killed at 9.45 last night. At 9.45, I was in Sam Daniels' office, helping Boston Blackie crack a safe. Okay, kid. I raided your icebox, Shorty. Hope you don't mind. Ah, boss, you can have anything I got. You know that. Uh, did you get the information I wanted on Blaine's family? Yeah, sure. Here it is, boss. All ripped down nice and neat. But, uh, boss, Mary's in jail. What? Yeah. Faraday checked Daniels when she said that you and her robbed the safe last night at 9.45. Daniels said it wasn't robbed. So Faraday's holding Mary. Gee, I just worked fast. Uh, what dope have you got on the Blaine family? Yeah, just the usual stuff. None of them are them much except that Robert Blaine. They got rich. It's all written down eh? You read it okay? Well, let's see. Hmm. John worked in a drugstore, a shoe yeah. store, but never for long. I, uh, got a lot of dope on this Robert. Yeah, I can see that. Member of the Stock Exchange on the board of directors of the local Red Cross, president of the Margo Country Club. He does all right. And what about Martha, the sister? Eh, she's just a dame, boss. She worked three different times. Stuck a long time to each job, too. First as a secretary, then for the telephone company, then as a buyer in a department store. Married twice, too. That's right, yeah. Could be that this is going to be very helpful, Shorty. Oh, gee, swell. I'm glad. And now, here's something for you. Gee, boss, these are the checks I forged on Mr. Daniels. That's right. They're yours now. You mean he gave them to you? Mary and I took them last night. But Daniels wouldn't tell Faraday that. Well, I've got to go, Shorty. Where to, boss? To the Blaine house. That's the first step in getting Mary out of jail and putting a murderer in. John. Well, Martha, what are you doing sneaking around the hall? Why? Wouldn't be surprised if you killed Uncle Bill. (laughs) Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? It'd be very profitable for two of us if... One of us did. Do you care which one? As long as I'm not the one. Maybe you should have thought about that soon. You uh, think the police will find out who killed Uncle Bill? They have to find out first. How? Are you afraid they will? We get no money until they do. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm going to bed. Her pleasant dreams. Don't be so generous. I should be rich enough to be very generous. Please. Matter of fact, I can help it, sister, dear. What dumb jerk turned out the lights? This dumb jerk. Who's there? The dumb jerk who turned out the lights. Wait, I'll turn them on again. Joe. Mm-hmm. What are you doing in my room? Looking for a clue. To what? Your uncle's murder. Well, you won't find it here. No, not now, because I already have. Look, I didn't do it. I didn't say you did. What have you found in here? Evidence. Of what? That uh, you're somewhat of a magician? What if I am? It's a hobby of mine. I'm just an amateur. Well, your amateur standing as a magician may solve a semi-professional murder. How? Mind if I use your phone? I'll go right ahead. Thanks. Who are you calling? The police. Well, there are three policemen downstairs. But I want the top man. Faraday speaking. Inspector, this is Blackie. Blackie, you're going to... Look, Inspector, tell your cops to come home. All is forgiven. Because I've not only found out how Blaine was killed, I know who killed him. I don't fall for the same gag twice, Blackie. You turn yourself over to the nearest policeman, or Mary stays in jail for the rest of her life. In that case, I guess I'll just go downstairs. Where are you? In Blaine's house. And your cops downstairs have got me right where I want them. Come on up, Inspector. The party's on me. All right, Blackie. Here we all are in Plains' bedroom. Now, no tricks. I'm not the only one with a gun. Keep him covered, Rollins. Do that, Rollins. I'll keep you busy. Do you have anything to say before I run you in? Say it now, Blackie. Will you listen? For some dumb reason or other, I always do. But no tricks. Oh, sorry, Inspector, but this time there has to be a trick. 
Uh, a magic trick. Huh? Uh, see this little gadget I have here in my hand? Yeah, what is it? A pane of what seems to be ordinary plate glass in a wooden frame. The glass is solid, isn't it? Sure it is. So what? So I place this metal ball on top of the glass. Thus? Yeah. Now, you don't think it's possible for a metal ball to fall through the glass and hit the top of the table below, do you? Of course not. You are so wrong, Inspector. What? Hey, it did go right through the glass. Without breaking it, Inspector. Of course, if you wish to inspect. But how did you do it? I pressed on the side of the wooden frame, and the glass moved to one side, far enough for the metal ball to drop through. Look at this. Yeah, I saw it. Give the windows in this room another going over, and you'll find a pane of glass constructed to do exactly the same thing. Rollins, Smith, start looking. Right. So that's how it was done. A trick pane of glass, huh? You catch on quick, Faraday. Where'd you get that trick? In John Blaine's room? Yes, in my room, but that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't it? I don't know about that. If we find well, a... It's like there are a pane of glass in the window that's flying. Just like the glass in that desert, too. Oh, so it doesn't mean anything, huh? All right, I admit that magic just belongs to me. It was in my room, but that's no proof I killed Uncle Bill. Well, uh, maybe this is. Hey, Blackie, where'd you get that gun? John Blaine's room. And if you check, I think you'll find us the gun that killed Uncle Bill. Okay. Come on, you're down to headquarters. But I tell you, I Now, 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 wait a minute. What for? I've got this case wrapped up in pink and blue ribbon. Better not tie the end yet, Faraday, because John didn't kill his uncle. Look, when you face the evidence, you've got to come then to the... Then con- do an about face, Inspector. There's a little item of the telephone call. Blaine got a call from the murderer when John and Martha and Robert were all in the house. John didn't make that call. Uh, but I know who did. Well, I know who didn't. No member of the family. Those were outside calls. There's only one phone here. When you jump to conclusions like that, Inspector, try not to land in your head. The one thing that had me baffled about this whole thing was, if one of the family killed the uncle, how was that telephone made to ring while all the family were in the house? Well, an accomplice outside. Yes, I thought of that. Ruled it out. It's too risky. Some information about John, Robert, and Martha Blaine that Shorty got for me gave me the right answer. Yeah? Martha Blaine is your killer. Why, Mr. Jones, you're so dashing. Oh, is this going to be another fairy story? You worked for the telephone company for several years, didn't you, Mother? So what? When telephone linemen repair out-of-order phones, they dial a certain number that causes the telephone to ring. Well, that's general knowledge. Everyone in this room knows that. But the number the linemen dial is a closely guarded secret. You are the only one in this room who could possibly know that number. That's... uh... I... Anytime you wished, you could just go to one of the several extension phones in this house, dial the callback number, and cause every phone in the house to ring. Okay, lady, you're going down to headquarters. But, uh, Grab her, boys. Come on, lady. No, come no, on. you don't. Come You'll on. never get come me. I got her, Hold on. Go with me. Okay, okay. Oh, take her out. Oh. Are you happy now, Inspector? Yeah. But you're not going to be. You're not completely out of this. Did you tell me where you were at the time of the murder? Cracking Sam Daniels' safe? That's not so. Because I checked on that, and Daniels said his safe hadn't been touched. Then why did you put Mary in jail? She told me she helped you crack the safe. I had to hold her. Faraday, holding Mary is my exclusive privilege. Let's go get her out. Hiya, Jailbird. Blackie. Oh, Blackie, are you all right? <laughs> sure. And now I'm letting you out. Where did you get those keys? From Faraday. But how? <laughs> Don't worry, honey. He gave them to me. Honestly? Of course, Ma. Well, cross the threshold, will you? Aren't you coming out? No. You're coming in. But why? Come on. All right. Here I am. Are you by any chance locking us in? I am. Give me the key. Well, why? Give them to me. Okay. Here you are. Oh, this is much better. Now I know we can't get into trouble. Well, why? <laughs>
Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.